So big warm welcome to Becca, who is a reflexologist and a homeopath. And I've known her for, I think, 10 years because that's how old my daughter is. And I saw her at the very end of pregnancy with that daughter. So it's 10 years. Wow. And over that time, we have talked about all sorts of things while I've been having wonderfully calming <laughs> reflexology um, because I run red tents and in those women's circles all sorts of things come up because we feel free and safe to talk about um, our bodies and what's going on with them and so Beck and I often have a really good chat about all things women's health and I wanted to talk to her today about a specific condition that I didn't know about before she told me about it. So would you like to introduce it? Okay, so hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, yeah, so I have started working with the most main, uh, amazing Czech homeopath called Romana, um, who is specialist in lichen sclerosis. And she needed um, another homeopath to work with her. And it's a condition close to my heart or close to my bits um, mm -hmm. because I have lichen sclerosis. Um, it's an autoimmune vulval skin condition, often goes hand in hand with thyroid problems, which I also have. I've got um, Hashimoto's, uh, which is an autoimmune um, underactive thyroid. And I have Crohn's disease, so another thyroid, another, sorry, autoimmune condition. Um, and those of you who have uh, autoimmune conditions know that once you have one, you're more likely to get others and it sort of like becomes a cascade. So when I saw that Romana was looking for a homeopath, um, I told her, you know, I would really love to work with you because I, I have this condition. So I understand how awful it can be um and do you want to describe a little yeah. bit more sort of how it affects people so it, for me um it started when I just had my second son so that was 14 years ago and it was just this intolerable itching and I thought it was thrush um and we're kind of conditioned to think that we get itchy bits that, you know, there's Vagicil and there's all these over-the-counter preparations for itchy bits, but that's just what we get because we've got all these folds and things. And actually, I, I've come to the conclusion that I think that lichen sclerosis is more um, prevalent than we think. It's meant to be quite rare, but I don't think it is. Um, so itchy, um, itchy between the labia, the clitoris can affect the anus as well. Um, and the itching can lead to cuts or you can have cuts before you have the itching. Um, the skin becomes quite uh, weak um, or thin, but the treatment is steroid. The traditional treatment is steroid cream, which obviously can increase the, the thinning of the skin. But you can also have fusing um, because once you have a cut, then once it heals, um, it can affect how everything joins back together and there can be fusing, there can be atrophy. Um, so the um, skin can become tighter. So often the clitoris, can, clitoral hood can become tighter or the urethra or the vaginal opening can become tighter. Um, and so for some women, it can be really, really distressing and really nasty. And it is also um, thought to be um, a precursor to cancer. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Um, Precancer, uh, precancerous condition. Um, so that it's really can be very nasty. Um, there are some women who end up then with vulval cancer. Although I was told by a dermatologist that often the the, the women that she had seen who had vulval cancer had been more old ladies who had left it for decades not told anybody and then it becomes you know cancerous and things but um yeah it can be really distressing the itching is just like another level of itching um 
Can I just imagine it effect, can affect quality of life on so many levels? So, you know, if there's that itching, not wanting to go out to meet with people or, you know, um, maybe feeling uncomfortable using toilets out and about. Yeah. Because um, I imagine well, it stings if there are cuts that it yes. might sting if you're, if you're weeing. Yeah. Or, yeah. So I work with women um, now. So I'm lucky enough, you know, one of the amazing things that um, came out of the first lockdown was I needed to um, put my business online and really um, uh, uh, most of my, my business previously had been reflexology um, with some homeopathy, but I needed to put everything uh, online to, to do the homeopathy. And I now work internationally with women, um, obviously, you know, all over the world, a lot in, in America or Australia. Um, and heat can aggravate, but I've got women who, used to run they can never they can't run um now because it just just the i guess the lycra aggravates that area um can't wear jeans you know just stuff that we take for granted mm. um some people don't wear pants because pants can aggravate um it becomes just so far reaching and obviously can affect their relationships they don't want to have sex um because that can aggravate, um, can cause cuts. Um, but also what I'm finding really interesting is working with women, um, so the homeopathy is looking at what's the root cause of their symptoms. So it doesn't matter whether they have lichen sclerosis or thrush or whatever it might be. We take the unique symptoms of that particular uh, person that I'm working with and, and I should say it can affect men too though I haven't worked with men um, yet on it and little girls I've got um, some really quite young girls who the parents think it probably started when they were four um, can be worse so puberty uh, menopause times of hormonal change um, like I said mine definitely is aggravated if my thyroid is out of balance that's when I uh, start to have some itching um, so for me it really is related to my cycle um, I I haven't had um, a flare-up for, for some years and I've managed that with homeopathy but it really is a case for me I have to manage my hormones I have to make sure that I'm um, as stress-free as possible and um, yeah that's my trigger is definitely stress so um, when, when in the yeah. cycle would it tend to be worse um, so it really, again, is very individual. Um, for some women, it can be from ovulation right the way through to the period and ease with the period. Um, with others, especially if you use pads, um, that can aggravate with the moisture of a period. So some women find it, it easier to use moon cup or tampons um, because keeping the moisture away from the area um, so it's not affecting inside it's, it really is the surface that it's it can affecting. it can affect inside but it's generally the surface mm -hmm. um yeah it, it tends to be you get white um the real characterization of uh lichen sclerosis is there are white like plaques or white um uh kind of not as scaly as psoriasis if you've ever seen somebody with psoriasis not not as thick as that but there's definitely a whitening to the skin um, but it can also affect anywhere on the body it doesn't have to be um, in the vulva like I have somebody who um, has patches elsewhere and the, the vulva isn't affected but usually it's it's the um, between the labia yeah it's um and the, the perineum and, and into the anus yeah or the, the very much the surface Mm. And do you see patterns in terms of, I don't know, behaviours or sort of emotional things that are going on for people? When I do, I, I, and I wouldn't like to say that this is the case for all LS sufferers, um, because I'm a firm believer that people uh, are drawn to the therapist. So often, I, I don't know how much is the, the women that I work with is that that I'm seeing a theme because of they're drawn to me. Um, but for me, there's a grief. Um, there seems to be um, 
there's definitely hormonal changes. There's definitely um, grief. There's been um, in a number of women, there's been some real indignation, um, things that have happened that have really, excuse my language, pissed them off. And it's, it's, I remember my first homeopath I went to see asked me my, why my vagina was angry. And I just thought, well, that's like, oh, this was before I was a homeopath. I was like, well, that's a bit rude. What do you mean by that? You know, I kind of like, there's nothing, you know, I, I just, that's a, bit, that, rude. I like that's that. a bit rude. Like, I just didn't see the connection really. <laughs> um, but now looking back, I can, I, you know, I, I obviously don't, I won't go into to detail because the, you know, it's, um, it would be a very sensitive point if I went into more detail about why my vagina might be, uh, have been angry. But um, I can definitely see that link now. And it, it comes out with, with women. If, you know, there's been a, a number that I've worked with where actually it's, it's come out that they aren't particularly happy in their marriages and they don't like their husbands, you know. And I find that really quite interesting. Um, so superficially, there might have been... Um, a bereavement or there's there's a there's a grief that there's a grief layer but underneath that there is a a resentment towards um their other half and and i find that interesting i wouldn't say that that's the case with all of them but i do find it really interesting that it then means you know that they've got a legitimate reason to not have intercourse because they're sore or they're in the intercourse makes them sore so then they don't you know mm. it's a you know it's very much yeah very protective yeah. and and especially with somebody who's maybe got atrophy where actually it's physically not possible I just I find it interesting and I'm I'm definitely not saying that everyone who has atrophy is in an unhappy relationship and it's just because they're um you know they don't want to have sex or whatever because I know that there are women who definitely that is not the case um but I it's just it's interesting of the mind body link mm -hmm. and um how we just not necessarily connected like I wasn't connected I was you know I was a reflexologist at that point when I saw the homeopath and I still didn't connect mm -hmm. what was going on with my physical symptoms and and what was going on in my head. Really interesting. Because we were talking about how probably the pre prevalence of it is actually greater because anything which is to do with sort of women's bits, you know, there can be all sorts of emotions attached to that. You know, maybe you don't want to go to the GP because you feel ashamed or find it very embarrassing or all sorts of things. Um, but I, I thought it was really interesting what you were saying that, you know, originally you thought it was thrush. You know, and so you, when something's not right, you look for an explanation in, in what you know. Mm. Um, and that's why I think it's so important to, you know, to be speaking about it and learning a bit more about it. So yeah. that hopefully, you know, other people don't have to wait as long as you to find something that will help. And, it, and it's been um, for me, you know, it's not it isn't um, comfortable for me to obviously talk about 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 it it's taken me some courage to kind of stand up and go actually this I, I suffer from this you know this this is but I, I think there's a whole concept for me that's really important the um, Carl Jung and the concept of wounded healer and that actually it's important not always you know obviously you can work with somebody who hasn't had that experience but for me LS I, I get it I get how awful it, it can be um and how much it can affect your life and that it's embarrassing and you know it's a bit like the you know the Crohn's disease I would be happier talking about the Crohn's disease than I would the lichen sclerosis and like why should that be mm. like that's just silly really isn't it it's just a different bit mm. Mm. yeah so it sounds like the homeopathy has has really helped you stay on top of it now yes yeah, yeah it does um 
so work with with all of the autoimmune conditions I've got um, it, it it helps with the symptoms so you know touch wood I haven't had um, a Crohn's flare up I can't remember I mean it has to be at least six possibly eight years since I've had a Crohn's flare up um, obviously I have my own homeopath I don't self-prescribe on chronic um, conditions um, but just knowing your body and keeping on top of the stress for me is what helps and I am also I try really hard to be gluten and dairy free because I think that those are also my triggers um, but it's just yeah finding the root cause um, and working with women I mean I've had the the program that we do um, with the um, lichen sclerosis work that Romana and I do we work with women for on a four-month program mm -hmm. um, generally because that's what you know you, you're not going to get a miracle after one um, one consultation um, is, it, is it that the longer that they've they've had it the longer it will take to to begin to see an effect Generally, mm -hmm. there is a there is a kind of general rule of thumb with with homeopathy that for every year you've had a condition, it will take a month to get rid of it. But sometimes I've had cases where I thought this is going to take a while and I've had the most amazing response. So one woman um, just the most amazing, you know, has made my year. Um, we've obviously we've all had a rubbish year but this has made my year um, at the end of the four month program um, she was able to wear jeans for the first time in six years she'd gone from having sex two to three times a year to two to three times a week um, <laughs> she, you know <laughs> amazing you know that she you know, she wanted she wanted that you know that was um, there's a whole thing about not feeling a woman if you're not able to um, have intercourse when you want to and the just the effect that LS can have on your feeling of feeling a woman um, but also she had has bipolar um, so this and was just generally very depressed feeling suicidal scared by her suicidal thoughts she was sleeping for 20 hours a day and within the first month she was suddenly sleeping more like eight hours of eight hours mm -hmm. a night. Um, at the end of the program, she'd lost, you know, several stone. She was feeling fantastic. And, you know, I wish every single case was that easy um, in terms of turning somebody's life around. But, you know, she, she did some work as well. She changed her diet. It's, I just gave her the tools with, I think, with homeopathy. You just give them the tools to, um, enable I give more energy I gave her remedies for increase her energy and just those little changes meant that she just um has done amazingly well so that is a fantastic case um with other people it's a bit more hit and miss and yes can take um can take longer yeah so I'm just thinking if somebody has been listening to this and think that that sounds like me maybe that explains what I've been experiencing I mean, yeah. obviously they can contact you, but is, is there like a, a charity or a, some kind of organization around lichen sclerosis? So there are, if you Google it, there are um, sort of lots of um, Facebook groups, Volvo Health um, Facebook groups. I think the, the first, port of port, first port of call that I would recommend is just go to your GP and double check what is going on. Um, if you have had cuts, if you've got lumps and bumps, cuts that haven't healed for um, months, you need to get that checked out by the GP to just make sure it's nothing more sinister. Um, and then you can work on it naturally if you want to. I don't look at people's vul vulvas, just to be very clear. Um, I don't look at photos. I do not want to, to see that. Um, so it's helpful to have a have a diagnosis to make sure that that's what we're looking at rather than vulvodynia or um, VIN or bacterial vaginosis, you know, just to be very clear about what is going on. And like I said, make sure that there's nothing more sinister going on. Um, 
and and then yeah talk to me talk to me and we can mm. we can see um how i might be able to help you medical model will say that there is the only thing you can do is have steroid cream um that there is maintenance programs where you use steroid cream mm. you know every few days for months and take it from there um i don't do that but that's you know i'm not recommending that that is or isn't what people do um yeah. you mentioned diet but um, i imagine also that you wouldn't recommend using products that uh, clean your sort of vulva you know sort of um, to change the smell of it or all those sorts of products yeah i mean i don't understand why we worry about smell and obviously if you have bacterial vaginosis that is different there is a, a very clear smell very sort of fishy odor with that i'm not talking about fishy odors i'm talking which obviously you do need to again you get it checked out by the gp but um uh just that natural scent yeah the natural yeah. smell i mean i also i, I always it always amazes me with the fertility work that i do that there are some women who think that they have thrush once a month because of the increase in cervical mucus and when I talk to them about that that is them ovulating you know it's like a revelation to them but then uh, you know I've worked with women where they would wear a sanitary pad every month um, at time of ovulation because of just how much um, discharge there is and then there's a knock-on effect Mm. with the chemicals in those that then can cause itching you know it's just why are we worried about the smell of our of our vulva you know it's um that's such an important point about also about the um cervical flow because I, I think that should be taught alongside the periods in school yes because as you say I mean I I've met so many people through red tent or women's workshops all sorts of things that when they were young and just sort of going through puberty thought that they were weeing themselves yeah and so they were really embarrassed because they that's what they thought that was um and like you said others that think oh maybe i've got thrush depending on what i like to call it white flow sometimes what what the white flow is like because it can vary so much from person to person so having some sense of that variation is really important too isn't it yes mm. and not not being made to feel ashamed either if you've got a little girl who um suddenly has an increase in um mucus that is just natural and, and that is what happens to them to mm -hmm. not make them feel ashamed that they have this you know going on as well I, you know I'm, I'm aware of people where that has they've been made to feel ashamed mm -hmm. um and that's wrong you know that's really wrong it's it like, actually you know be helpful to say the converse that it's a sign of a healthy cycle <laughs> yes exactly exactly so yeah I'm, i've become a bit of a, a an evangelist <laughs> evangelist yeah i never thought you know who knew at the beginning of this year that i would end up at the end of the year being um so passionate about vulvas but um <laughs> You know, it's it's been an amazing year, and uh, you know, awful obviously for us all. It's there's been some really rubbish times, but um, I like to look at the 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 good in everything. Um, no matter, you know, the, the every cloud has a silver lining kind of cliche, and for me, it feels like this is exactly what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, I I feel like I've found my Kind of life purpose that absolutely working with women with menstrual issues and vulval issues and all that you know all the all the bits in between and fertility to pregnancy it's just it, i feel like it's just an amazing area to work in because mm. um, it can make you, such difference you might like to know that um because I, I have an etsy shop and on there i have all sorts of mandalas that i've made for pregnancy and for um around the menstrual cycle but the thing that is the most popular by far by a million are the instructions for how to make vulva decorations <laughs> no i must have a look at that <laughs> i just every time i see that somebody's you know it's a pound to buy the instructions every time i see an email saying that somebody's purchased it, i'm like yeah that's just a bit of vulva love going out <laughs> into the world <laughs> i 
I maybe I forget the boys. So I've got four teenage boys in the house. Maybe that's something I could put in their stocking for Christmas. <laughs> the, like, I, I gifted one of the um, decorations to a good friend of mine. And I, when I make them, I put lavender from my garden inside. Oh, wow. And so he walked into the house and she'd left it on the kitchen counter. So he just picked it up. Oh, this smells really nice, mum. And then he, he looked at it and he's like, uh, is that what I think it is? <laughs> and then half an hour later, one of his friends walked in, did exactly the same, picked up. Oh, it, it, well, I think he said to him, smell this. This is really nice. And then, <laughs> and now look at what you're smelling. But I just love the idea that it's, you know, bringing a bit of lightheartedness and yeah. that it's just it's like you were saying before about, you know, whether it's your, your stomach or your shoulder or you know, why should it have such a charge? It, and it doesn't it doesn't make sense does it why why should it matter whether it's our bums or our noses or whatever but it that it is strange and I, I think it is it just seems a bit Victorian we, now yeah well and is it how we've been brought up you know is is it um something I, I don't know and I've got a daughter who's 18 months old and I'm I'm making sure that as best I can without being, you know, turning into the embarrassing mum, that I'm going to make it as normal as possible, you know, that mm. it, it's, that's, we smell and, uh, but we don't, you know, even smell sounds negative, that that's just the way that we are and we don't need to douche or spray or whatever over the counter stuff is that we, mm. some people use. I mean, I, that must just change the pH. You think about the crap that must be in it. It must change the pH so badly. And then is that, I mean, I'm not saying that is always what causes, you know, the, the vag bacterial vaginosis or whatever, but it does make you wonder, you know, mm. changing the pH, um, that that's not, when it's such a delicate balance, mm. not a great it's idea, a is it? Beautiful system, anyway, you know, self-cleaning. So, yeah. um, you know, I've, I've read things before that say that, that area is much cleaner than your mouth where you tend to hold a pen or put keys in or yeah um so it's, it's just bringing a new awareness to it isn't it yeah indeed um, well so tell people where they can find you so you can find me on instagram and facebook on um i'm at healing space reading or www.healing-space.co.uk so i'm based in Reading in the UK but I do online Zoom um, all over like I said like I'm I feel very blessed now to to be international it's just amazing it's, it's a brilliant. global phenomenon <laughs> yeah I don't know about that I've got a lot to learn I've got <laughs> definitely a lot to learn but um, I can offer no guarantees to people but what I what I can guarantee is that I would always do my best mm. throw whatever I can at them to make them um, to help them heal basically yeah mm. And I, I think you can't be underestimated either, the, the recognition and the empathy. Yes. I, I, sorry, I was just thinking then, there was actually um, the client that I was telling you about who'd had bipolar, that she was initially, when she went to the, the GP, was, well, and she was um, American-based, originally went to see a doctor and was told that she needed to be cleaner that her symptoms so she had itch um between her buttocks that's where her ls started and she needed to be cleaner so can you imagine the mortification of being told by a doctor that you're dirty you know and just for me to say that that was outrageous that um she would have been i don't know early 20s and to be told that she wasn't clean terrible and actually then later it was when she was diagnosed with the LS, but she hadn't felt confident enough to, to go back because she thought she wasn't clean. Um, oh, just astounding. So yes, giving somebody the validation that that was outrageous, but That's also giving- was looking for, validation. <laughs> validation, but also giving her homeopathic remedies um, for mortification, because actually, there was a theme within her case of just feeling terribly embarrassed and um, hiding it, uh, hiding it away, um, and that also helped. I think there was a uh, the, those types of remedies helped her, or other people respond really well to 
grief remedies or um, like I said, hormone support remedies, whatever it might be that their root cause is. And with other with people, it's not necessarily just that one thing. We talk in homeopathy about layers of an onion, mm -hmm. peeling away the onion, and each of those layers may be a different set of remedies. So once you get rid of the grief layer, there might be we're left with a hormone uh, layer that we need to try and resolve. Mm -hmm. So hugely interesting, and, and everybody I work with, it's it's a different um, mm -hmm. different way, yeah, unique to them. Thank you so much. Thank That's you for being right. brave and talking about it and raising awareness. Thank um, you. It's really incredible. Thank you. Well, thank you for the time. You know, it's um, like I said, it's it's been an amazing year and um, a real. It feels a privilege that w that women put their faith in me to mm. try and try and help resolve these issues because, um, like I said, I know just how rubbish it is. Yeah. Mm. So thank you, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>